of saved up stuff that we've almost talked about for the last week. And I've got a list. And so are you cool with me just hitting like four or five things that I'm pretty sure we almost talked about that I'm pretty sure we have opinions about? Yeah, I would love this. Okay. Yes, please. Rock and roll. I saw you wearing a precious blue beanie today in a snap (laughs) in Alabama. Yes. I'm wondering how necessary the beanie actually was Because of how far south Alabama is. Dude, it's 26 degrees Fahrenheit here. That is cold. (gasps) Are you guys, does everyone have shelter? Do you have exposed flesh in those temperatures? will freeze in literally four days. I could not live where you live, dude. I really couldn't. (laughs) My, My dad and I were driving somewhere and we were, you know, putting some groceries in the car. I said, dad, it's cold. Turn the heater on. He said, I would hate to live in the north. <laughs> so we could never live in Wyoming, man. It's insane. Do you think there's any truth to the thing that people say about, like, your blood gets thinner? When I lived in Vegas, I acclimated to that heat. And then when I moved back to a cold climate, it was different that first winter. It's really fun to watch people from out west come and visit Alabama because they're not used to the wet heat or the super humidity, I call it. Yeah, we, we don't have that. Yeah, we go skiing, and we'll go hit the slopes for an hour and a half, two hours, and we come in and warm up. It's a big deal to get an Alabama boy out into the snow. What is the coldest temperature you're going to see this winter in Alabama? We'll hit zero. Whoa. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, it happens. Zero Fahrenheit. Not very often. I mean, that that's the lowest we'll ever hit. So we hit 22, maybe as far down as 19. This time, around, oh, my dad got me a weather station, by the way. Oh, sweet. When the cold front came in, we dropped 15 degrees. and No, no, we dropped 10 degrees in about 15 minutes. I don't remember. I've got the graph. That's pretty dramatic. But it's cool. And I, I think I'm getting old because I care about that. And there, I picture your temperature at that altitude being a bit more steady. Up here, it's really mercurial because you're at, at high altitude. And so the sun makes a really big difference, especially in the winter. What does that word mean? Mercurial? Mercurial? Yeah. It means, well, in this case, it's really appropriate because I think it refers to mercury in a thermometer, but it means it's it can go up or down quickly. Huh. Okay. Or I've used that word wrong my entire life. That is also possible. It's really interesting because the, the planet Mercury, really hot on one side, really cold on the other. And I've always thought if you lived on Mercury, could you climb up to that spot? you know, where the, the Terminator is. <laughs> okay. There's, there's just one little spot that's like right in the middle. I don't know. I've always thought about that. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. You were telling me about Wyoming. <laughs> we'll see into the negative 20s. I think the coldest I've seen is minus 24, maybe 26. Whoa. It gets chilly, man. But we're close to West Yellowstone, Montana. And that's usually the the coldest place in the, the continental U.S. And... No, we're just, we're just in the right pocket for those conditions. But at the same time, we'll have days that are 55 degrees, t-shirt and shorts in January. But again, that's only when the sun's hitting you. And as soon as it's gone, you better get inside fast. Whatever the case, I've been charmed uh, hearing your updates on Alabama weather. You're just trying to make Alabamians look stupid is what you're trying to do. There's nothing I can do to make Alabamians look stupid because... Every other state and every other college football fan has to bend the knee to your supremacy once again because the Alabama Crimson Tide won yet another football national championship. Did you watch the game? I rewatched the last chunk. I I didn't see most of it. Okay, here's the deal, dude. I really appreciate the fact that we're in 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 a winning streak here. But our coach, his name is Nick Saban, he is like a true leader. Somebody snapped uh, a picture and put it on Twitter and it said, because Trump went to the the game and somebody said, Oh yeah. The most important man in the country. No, the most powerful man in the country and the president are both in the same, <laughs> the same stadium tonight. <laughs> I was like, Oh, that's clever. He's already a legend. He really is. Have you ever watched any news conferences or anything that he does? I just saw a video that made fun of, I assume Coca-Cola sponsors his press conferences because he always has this bottle of Coke that he's never consumed sitting right there. So I saw a video about that. That's all I know about his press conferences. Yep. Anyway, they're really, really good. Um, he, he actually is a leader. It's it's not a joke. 
it's like Yoda, right? Like all the people that, that work for him as an assistant coach, they end up going and getting their own program and they all come back and play him at some point in time. Like Kirby Smart was the head coach for Georgia mm-hmm. and they played for the national championship and no one has ever beaten Nick Saban once they leave, you know, under from under his wings. It's amazing. It really is impressive. So I'm not a huge, like diehard sports fan, but I love just the whole myth and legend that's kind of kind of growing up around him. It's really neat. Well, the Buffalo Bills latched onto the very last NFL AFC playoff position in uh, American football this year. And it was the first time they'd been to the playoffs, I think, this millennium. And those people are diehard, tailgate, go out in horrible weather fans. And you're sort of a football fan and your team has won it all five out of nine years. I just, I think you're spoiled and I don't think you appreciate what you have. (laughs) <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. But the one thing you're wrong you're wrong about is the fact that we don't appreciate it because we really do. I mean, there's people around here, you'll hear them say things like, man, we are really fortunate right now. This is really fun. It'll probably never happen again. And we're like, yeah, it probably won't. That's a nice thing to say. But like, do you really think that this time around, I mean, the fifth one in this stretch, I mean, you how many is Alabama one total? Total, I think it's, I don't know, somewhere between 16 and 18. I don't know. It's, Sweet Christmas. It's a lot. That's, oh, oh, my goodness. Well, it's some of the early ones are up for debate, right? Some people say they don't count. Some people say they do. But it's a lot. Uh, University of Central Florida would say they don't count. Let's see. No, they wouldn't. They actually claimed one themselves this year. 17 <laughs> national championships. Yep. The governor signed a proclamation. The governor of Florida. No, he did saying that they were national champions. Yes, he did. Look. It oh, up. that's that's really cute. <laughs> that's really cute. Did Wherefore he really? and hitherto <laughs> and because of on this day, <laughs> I proclaim. It's that kind of thing. Is it yeah, really? Not, like, I mean, they went undefeated. Usually, in in fairness, in a sport, if you go undefeated, you're the winner. Usually, usually, because college football is weird. Well, I mean, the whole strength of schedule argument, right? And and it's it has merit, yeah. It's like saying Matt Whitman went to his son's birthday sleepover and defeated all of the kids at Thumbmore, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and then, which I could do. Yeah, and then you've got like this the National Thumbmore Association over here. Sure. And, you know, all these guys that have been training, <laughs> whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. No, your analogy is flawless. Yeah, it's perfect. There's literally I can't no think holes. of any way to push back at all. And <laughs> I don't think there's any problem with equating everyone on Central Florida's schedule, including Auburn, as being the equivalent of seven-year-old boys I thumb wrestle with. Okay, so you do have a point there. So (laughs) I'd like to think so. So Auburn beat both Georgia and Alabama. The two teams that played for the national title. Exactly. And then UCF beat Auburn in the the final game. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you you got a point there. It's enough to merit a governor pulling a political stunt to score a few points. At least that. This episode of No Dumb Questions is sponsored by RX Bar, which is a whole food protein bar with simple, real ingredients, and they list those out right there on the package so you know exactly what you're eating, it's healthy for you, and it tastes good. So, Matt, here's the deal. I'm going to ask for stuff. You give it to me immediately. What's a flavor? Apple cinnamon. What's another flavor? Blueberry. Tell me another flavor, Matt. Maple sea salt. Well, I actually like the chocolate sea salt. How much gluten's in each bar? None. What about soy? Also none. Obviously, there's dairy then, right? No. Uh, What about sugar? Zero added. Fillers? None. Preservatives? Not happening. Artificial colors, Matt. Why would they do that? That's an excellent point. So the thing about the RX bar is all the stuff that's not in it. It's really healthy for you, and it makes perfect sense to put this stuff in your body. But where does the protein come from, Matt? Egg whites. If you've ever worked out, you know egg whites are absorbed really well by the body. That's a good way to get protein in there. They're great. I love them for breakfast on the go. If you want to try RX Bar, I highly recommend going to rxbar.com slash NDQ and enter the promo code NDQ at checkout to get how much of a discount, Matt? 25% off. So, so like how much off? Did I stutter? 25% off. No, Matt, you did not stutter, which is why everybody is now going to go to rxbar.com slash NDQ for that 25%, and they're going to enter the promo code NDQ at checkout. Thanks to RxBar for supporting the show, and thank you for supporting the sponsor, because that helps us do this more often. So is the sabbatical happening? Yeah, it's happening, and it's getting really close, and I don't know what to do. You're going to stay here, right? 
Well, for at least some of it, yeah, yeah, we're coming to Alabama. Okay, so here's here's the deal, everybody. Matt's got an opportunity to take a sabbatical, which is stinking awesome, right? Yes. Thank you, my church. So what what do you do when you're just given free reign to go anywhere with your family? Like, what are you going to do? You've got, how, how much time do you have? Three months-ish. And you can go anywhere and do, like, you're only limited by your own personal finances, right? That's it. Okay, so first of all, I think it's a great time to get Fox Thunder Glare, the alias, into action and get a few credit cards, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're reading my mind. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm joking. What are you going to do? In all seriousness, you can go anywhere, dude. We've had a year to think about this. We've got some leading candidates, but it's too much freedom. It's the paradox of choice. <laughs> I, I, it's too many options on the shelf. I don't know. So, so we've talked a lot about going south of the equator to pick up more summer months this year because, I mean, we're heading out on this thing pretty soon. And so we've talked about New Zealand or Peru. Dude. Like uh, we're saving up airline credit card miles to try and find a way to afford it. You should totally be a sheep farm hand in New Zealand. The fly fishing is excellent there. That's all the videos on YouTube, dude. I live in a fly fishing mecca and the stuff i see from new zealand puts us to shame i want their fish okay so there, there's two problems you have to go somewhere mm -hmm. and then once you go there you have to live there well yeah at least for a while i'm thinking we're going to spend a good chunk of time at your place um then i'm also thinking explore around the united states a little bit like drive around see some historical stuff with the kids i mean i've got the whole family with me and the dog while we check out, I don't know, the world. But I really want the kids to see Europe. They never have. So we could go that direction. Camilla is a Spanish speaker who goes by Camila when we're in Latin America. And she <laughs> really wants the kids to see that. Because Camilla with two L's, it means like a stretcher or a cot. So you can't say Camilla. It doesn't work. Really? So she's Camila. Yeah, yeah. It gets a laugh every time. So so she really wants to to go to Peru or Costa Rica we go to Nicaragua a lot, maybe there, I don't know. And I want to do something crazy. This is something that has always seemed out of reach that we've never done. Like live in a volcano. Australia or New Zealand <laughs> or live in a volcano. <laughs> Hadn't thought of that, but thank you for the suggestion. So like if, you, if people would, we haven't talked about this. I'm just going to say it. It's going to get weird. If people had a place for you to stay, like a, a cave or something. Sure. Could you do stuff like that? Uh, like, would you do that? Like, if somebody was like, hey, I've got this tobacco barn in Kentucky. <laughs> I mean, you can, like, sleep here on your way through. Would you do weird stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. We're we're weird like that. I mean, within reason. There's a lot of people that listen to this podcast, man, and you're about to go on a legitimate sabbatical. There's probably a dude that works on a sheep farm Okay, so maybe maybe not that many people listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, if this is the if this is what we're going to do to figure out what I do with my sabbatical, I can tell you where I'm going. Riverton, Wyoming, <laughs> to your mother's in house. my mom's basement. <laughs> so, <laughs> She's a wonderful, wonderful woman. In all seriousness, if if somebody had some something like two days max or something like that, would you do it? Well, I, yes, it, that's better than the plan we have right now, which is go to your place and then I don't know. <laughs> I'm totally steering this in a way that sounds... I'm, I'm living vicariously through you. What if I make some kind of form on the website? <laughs> You're committed to this. <laughs> or or people could just send an email or something. What if we just put a link in the show notes? And if anybody has something that they want you to do on sabbatical, they can just leave it there. They don't. It has, doesn't have to be at their house or even in their city. They'd be like, hey, you need to go check out this volcano <laughs> hut or whatever. Well, yeah, and that's the kind of stuff. I want to see things I've never seen and I've never heard of that are super interesting off the beaten path. Like every little town has got some crazy thing that's actually incredibly cool that just doesn't get a lot of publicity and it wouldn't make it through my filter. I, I just wouldn't get to see it. You know, Gavin Gavin Free said that from the Slow Mo guys. Him and Dan were here a while back and we were in a cave. There's this place here called Cathedral Caverns. I'll take you when you're here. It's awesome. And he said, Sounds great. He said, dude, 
this is so crazy that we're under the ground this far looking at this stuff. I was like, yeah, what do you mean? He's like, but he's like, dude, we wouldn't be here unless we knew you. And I've never That's even right. heard of this place. And now I'm here checking it out and it's amazing. I was like, yeah. And there's stuff like that all over the world. Yes. I mean, you can go to Paris. Yes. And you can go to the Louvre or you can go to this weird cheese plant. I feel like I, you're making things up right I'm now. A, and you're kind of running out of steam. I'm, I'm, yeah, I am running out of steam. You know exactly. Like, the weird cheese for plant? For example, I went to see Jörg Sprav, <laughs> the, the slingshot okay. guy in Germany. And okay. the reason I said cheese plant is because his friend has a cheese plant and we shot slingshots at a cheese plant. And it was amazing. And so... That sounds pretty good. Your point is? It, it's the Greyhound bus philosophy. I've never told you this, have I? Mm-mm. So... I got on a Greyhound bus in Jackson, Mississippi, and I took it all the way to Atlanta, Georgia one time, and there was this guy in the back of the bus. He was like an inner city wannabe rapper guy. You know, he had a, a disc or whatever, and he was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm trying to get my name out there. I was like, okay, that's cool, whatever, man. And he said, he said, I just love to travel the world. I was like, yeah, I like to travel too. He goes, you know what it's about, don't you? And I was like, yeah, it's about like seeing new places. And he goes, no, man, no. Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's like seeing things you've never seen. It's like, dude, no, you don't get it. I was like, well, tell me, man. I, I want to I get it. Tell me. He said, it's about culture. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, it's about going places and meeting the people and learning what their life is like. And you know what? I like him. He was just some dude in the back of a a Greyhound bus somewhere between Jackson, Mississippi and Birmingham, Alabama. But I don't even know his name. But that one little conversation we had changed my life because it changed the way I hmm. look at places I go and things I do and all that. Because I, I don't want to just go to the town and see the touristy yeah. spots. I want to meet the people and see what they care about. What is the coolest, not Alabama, off the beaten path thing that you've ever seen? Your highest recommendation? Without a doubt, Cooper PD, Australia. Opal. Opal Town, right? Yeah. That was unbelievable. Where you met Georgie? Yep, Georgie. Oh, he was on the news. Somebody tweeted me that he was on like the national news. And I was like, that's Georgie. What's up, man? I know things about you. Know what? Nobody else knows, I think, unless you made them all up. Anyway. Well, that guy could have murdered you easy and he didn't. So I think he's a good man. Yeah. I mean, that was that was great. That was culture. I worked on an opal drilling rig for a day. And those people took me in and they're like, hey, this is your job for the day. You're, you're actually running this rig. We're, this is not tourism crap. We need your help right now. It's like, yes. Wow. That was so cool. And I took pictures of them with their rig. And, you know, I said, hey, I'm going to mail them to you. They're like, oh, okay, whatever. And I actually did. It was really cool. I enjoyed it. They were kind to me. I, I think that's the stuff that matters. I mean, I don't think you want to like put the kids in the car and drive across the country and go see the the world's largest frying pan and stuff like that. No, but I if there is a biggest ball of twine in Minnesota, I do want to see that. I think you want to as appropriate like actually experience the culture in these places. That is what we want. That's why I want to take the family to Italy, and it's why Camilla wants to take the family to Latin America. I I bet there's somebody that listens to this in Italy that could at least tell you where a, a very reasonably priced hotel is. Because if you get on Airbnb or something like that, you're going to get expensive rates. There's somebody that's got an aunt with a vacant house that they'll let you rent for a reasonable price. You may be right. Francesca and Gabriele, they listen in Italy, in Italy but they, uh, well, I told you this, we did the meetup yeah. when I was in Italy this summer. Yeah. And they came with a friend. I don't know, whatever the case, great conversation and then, I don't think I told you this, I called those two back up and asked them if they would go and get some running around Rome public transportation footage for me yeah. for my video on the Apostle Paul after the Bible. Yeah. And they went and did it, and I integrated in all my stuff, and they were awesome. That's cool that people help you, and they come from different walks of life, and they just want you to keep doing the things that you... Uh, as people, are, people are cool everywhere. Yeah. And if you listen to how things get presented these days, uh, you'd think everybody was horrible because that gets ratings and clicks and attention. But I don't run into a lot of horrible people. I just don't. Even people I really disagree with tend to not be horrible. That's the stuff you need to do, man. You need to, you need to do that sort of stuff. 
It needs to get a little weird. It needs to get weird. And I've had a bunch of cool adventures by myself, a pretty good amount of cool adventures with my wife. But this is special because this is this is all of us. And I hope it's just memorable and different. I don't want to just take them and show them stuff I've already seen and play tour guide. I want to discover together. I want to unwrap the present together. I know what we're going to do. We're, we're going to put a link in the show notes that's simply an email address. And I don't know if you know this on Gmail. If you put plus at the end of the, the email address, plus just whatever you want it to say, then it'll still go to the original email address, but you can then filter all that stuff and we can put it all in one folder. No, I had no idea. Yeah. Gmail ignores dots, like periods, and it also ignores plus and then anything after the plus. And so that's what we'll do. We'll put an email link in the show notes. And anybody that has an idea for Matt's sabbatical, please email that in. And Matt, you will filter through all 73,000 of those, right? You better believe I will. You kidding me? If somebody's willing to take the time to give me advice, I'm listening. That's awesome. I hope it gets weird. (laughs) I hope it does too. We're going to step away from the conversation for just a second to say a huge thank you to everybody who thinks it's a good idea to support us on Patreon. I know not everybody's in a spot to do that or not everybody's wired, but for those of you who who do support us, seriously, thanks a ton. It goes a long ways toward making this thing happen. It's a huge encouragement and it funds the stuff we want to do and helps us make more and better stuff. So, The point is you're awesome and we always want to take at least a moment on each show to tell you that and to say thank you. If you want to be a part of the sponsorship thing, you can go to patreon.com slash no dumb questions or you can just hang out and listen. Either way, we're glad you're here. Thanks. Let's get back to the conversation. So I went back to school. You've been talking about this for a while. How'd it feel? Weird. Really weird. So PhD got linked up with a really cool professor And it's something I've been wanting to do. And finally, I was just like, I just have to do it. I just have to start. Did you approach them or did they approach you? They approached me to begin with. and Yeah, you're a boss. And then the more, whatever. And then the more I started thinking about it, I was like, you know, well, I'll be honest. My wife said, you should probably go do that. And I was like, yes, ma'am. And so it's intimidating as all get out, dude. It is very intimidating. Um, it's been a long time since I've been in a classroom setting. So I turned to my son the day of, I said, Hey buddy, he's, uh, he's five. I said, I am going to class today. He goes, okay, that's good. I said, you know, you probably know a lot more about being in class now than I do. Cause you've been going and I haven't. He goes, yeah. I said, what do I need to know? <laughs> and he, uh, <laughs> good dadding. Oh, this was excellent. He goes, well, number one. Never talk when the teacher's talking. I was like, okay, okay, got it. No, got it. So, like, mm-hmm. if I need to talk, what I do? Just raise your hand. Okay, I'll raise my I'll hand. Just raise my hand. Scribble that down in <laughs> the field notes here. Don't yeah. talk when the teacher's and talking. And then he said, Great. and number two, don't cry. They they don't like it when you cry. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you do based on those two? I did all right. I mean, I, I got a little teary eyed when, when he started breaking out the partial differential equations, but. <laughs> But I did okay. I held it together. And when Tara pulled away and left you with your sack lunch? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Sure. No, I did did feel really old. Well, I mean, demographically, I mean, kind of, yeah. Yeah, non-traditional age. And so I sat down and I was like, is this the class? I don't remember if this is the class. And so I tried to like link up to the Wi-Fi. I didn't know how to do that. And I tried to like log in with my student ID in the computer lab, I didn't know how to do that. Oh, did you get an ID card? I totally did. <laughs> did you do a screwy picture? Did you do something funny? Or were you a, a non-traditional mature student? So the guy pulls up my uh, he pulls up my ID card. He's like, all right, so uh, we're going to take a picture. He goes, whoa. And I said, oh, what? What? Because, you know, I graduated in 2011 for my master's degree. I was like, what is it? He goes, man, that's a crazy picture. I was like, can I see it? And I looked at it. I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. I would made a big old goofy face. He goes, all right, we got to reshoot it. I, I was like, so. okay. And so I did the same thing. Good. Big, goofy face. He goes, ha, that's great. And he showed it to me. And I was like, oh, dude, I I can't do that. <laughs> I can't pull this off <laughs> No, anymore. I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> like, you got the smarter everyday thing going on. <laughs> They're going to pull. They've got me on the website. They're going to pull that up. I, I have to. I got to do this straight. Oh. Yeah. Oh, did I tell you the arrangement? So... I'm going to 
work on the PhD. I've, I've got a you know a professor that's I'm going to do my dissertation with, but okay. he got a grant from the National Science Foundation for five years. It's like a million bucks for five years, and with this grant, he can actually hire undergraduates to come work on this program. And the way it's going down, he can't pay for my tuition with it, but he can pay for underprivileged, Is I'm doing air quotes right now, underprivileged youth undergrad programs. So basically, people that don't have a, a good shot at life or whatever, like, but if they work their butt off in school and they have good grades, we can get 15 undergrad students and straight up pay for their tuition. And he's like, yeah. You got to be kidding. No, I'm not joking. And you're... And are you going to head up that team of researching undergrads? He said I can. And so oh my goodness. it's going to be so sweet. So what I'm going to do, this was the pro- proposal I made to the university. I was like, look, you don't have to pay me anything. Just let me do Smarter Every Day. Patrons support Smarter Every Day. Let me do Smarter Every Day and make a video about this program. And then we'll just get everybody to apply. And then we can straight up pay for 15 people to go to school that wouldn't get to go to school otherwise how cool is that yeah it's cool you're not gonna have any trouble getting applicants and so are you are you writing checks for this degree i am so you're just straight up paying for a phd that you got invited to do i've been saving up with with smarter every day for a while and so the idea is look it's freaking called smarter every day (laughs) you know what i mean so you're making some good points if if i'm not doing things to actually progress my own education, then what the heck am I doing with this? Because there's three, when I first started Smarter Every Day, there were three main things I wanted to do. Number one, I wanted to get smarter every day, and I just wanted to document that process. Number two, I wanted to help other people get interested in learning, and that was people watching the videos. And number three, I wanted to to secure the educational future of my children. Those three things. It's like video one, that was the goal. So this ticks one of those boxes for sure. Two of those boxes. Yeah, two of those boxes. What What do you think I should do in that video? What's the objective of the video? Is it just to get good applicants or is it to make a good video that people who aren't going to apply will enjoy watching too? Here's how this went down. Dr. Hazeli, his name is Kavan Hazeli. He's the youngest professor in the department and he applied for this grant and all the older professors was like, dude, don't even waste your time. You're not going to get that. And he's like, whatever, I'm going to try. And he tried and he totally got it. And so that's a guy that gets out there and, you know, he's out there on the edge, right? He's trying stuff. I want this dude to be successful. And so I want to talk about the research that I'm going to do and then invite people to come do the research with me. That's what I want to do. And then are you going to make videos about the research? Yeah, I want to. I think it's cool research. What do you think? Well, it depends on how cool the research is. Like, I think the idea sounds great, but I don't know what you're doing. I know people in my discipline sometimes do projects that justify a PhD, but they have zero value to anything that's going on in the larger world. And I know other people who do dissertations and PhD projects that are phenomenally interesting and grow into books that lots of people want to read and that shape the field and teach the world. So what are you looking at? Uh, It's very important. Oh yeah. You don't want to say, cause you don't want somebody else to do it. No, I don't. I don't want to say, yeah. Good. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to or whatever. I I think the the goal, from my perspective, is exactly what my wife and I decided it was. Like, look, at some point you're going to be old. You're not. You're probably not going to look good on the internet anymore, or look intelligent, or whatever it is people will watch your videos for. When did you look good on the internet? Thank you for the humility. I appreciate I'm it. I'm here to help you. Yeah. Come on, you love me. That's awful. <laughs> and so, what do you want me to do? Yeah, exactly. And so. It only makes sense to try to future-proof yourself, and being able to be a professor would do that. So that was kind of the idea. Dude, you'd be great in a classroom. I would love that, dude. Someday somebody should give you like a national education award. You're that good. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) I'm uncomfortable where this is going. Let's go to the next segment. Dude, here's the thing. Your superpower is that You do a really good job of going into big boy, complicated, fancy, smart world that people like me don't understand. I don't have the education for it. I I just, I don't know. I'm interested in it. I can get it if somebody can explain it to me, but you do a great job of going there and getting what you need and then coming back to normal person world and inviting normal people into the conversation and using words that we can understand because we're not dumb. 
we just don't swim in that jargon and that vocabulary. We need somebody to put it in a way that we can get. And then we learn things and you're really, really intuitive about how to do that. And so if this whole journey lands you in some university classroom someday, I think it's a pretty natural trajectory. And I, I think you'd crush it there. Two things. Number one, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that. Number two, you wasted a lot of breath on something Tina's going to cut out for us. <laughs> Uh, that all stays because I'm pretty sure uh, I'm pretty sure the edit happens in Lander, Wyoming. So you remember I told you my uncle was trying to tell us something, but he was intubated and he couldn't. Yeah, of course. Well, we figured it out. He had bought my aunt a birthday card like three weeks early for her birthday, and he had it in his house. In the re- and her birthday was after the accident? Yes. And the reason he was wanting to tell only my other aunt alone, we thought he had like some deep financial secret because she works at a bank. And No. He wanted to tell her where to find the birthday card. She went and got the birthday card. She brought it up to him, signed in it what he told her to sign or whatever, and then he held it in his hand when you know his wife came in and he gave her her birthday card on her birthday. I've never met this guy. I am stunned. By what you've described as we've talked about this, about where, where his brain is at. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I'd do worse. Yeah. I know I would. Yeah. It was, I hope when I'm your uncle's age, I would be more like him, but... It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Heartwarming's a, a lame adjective, but I, I can't think of a better one. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty special thing. Okay, let's move on. I don't want to talk about this anymore. We're, we're, Fair enough. We're working through it. All right, so go ahead. What's up? Uh, I got two things from the subreddit that caught my attention. One was a post by Backup628. This is a relatively well upvoted post on r slash NDQ, the place where whoever wants to contribute can. It says, suggestion, replace, quote, listeners in the place where it says how many people are subscribed with bots made by Matt's mom. Oh, I saw this. Yeah. And- Your thoughts. Uh, I don't know. There, There was the other guy that replied and he was like, no. He's like, I'm not Matt's mom, so no. And uh, I thought that was interesting yes. because, you know, a demonym is what you call the people of a collected group, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I think that's interesting. I think that's interesting C- because they said we should just replace it. Oh, you've already done it. What? I don't think so. Huh? <laughs> you what? Totally I don't know did. what you're talking about. I just pulled, did what? <laughs> I just pulled it up. <laughs> <laughs> you did it just to make that guy mad, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I saw his comment too. I he replied, it "Mom bots." That's dumb, Matt. <laughs> that is so dumb. We can't do that. Wait, which one's dumb? It's a funny joke that everybody that listens is your mom because it's you know it's us talking about how bad we are at all this stuff. Oh wait, 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 wait. Fat Cage says, this isn't Matt's mom, and I hate the idea. All the people here are real and definitely not Matt's mom. Respectfully, a real person that isn't related to Matt at all. <laughs> that could be sarcasm. <laughs> and then you replied, I think this one is your good. best one, Mom. <laughs> You're such a jerk. <laughs> Those programming classes are paid off. <laughs> such a jerk. I love it. Oh, man. I, I, I got to admit. In the last episode, people got really, really mad about the net neutrality stuff. Yep. And it's like, my goodness, people are angry. Wow. Uh huh. Man. It, but we knew that topic would make it. There was no thing <laughs> we could say and have it be interesting conversation and make people happy on Reddit. It's just, it ain't happening. My favorite comments were the, hey, Destin, sorry about your uncle. Hey, Matt, die in a fire. <laughs> 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 I was just, you're, you're not that wrong. I know. <laughs> Matt, go, go, whatever the word is, foley, <laughs> emoliate yourself. <laughs> Golly, man, people hate you. I, I loved it. Uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. Oh, back to the topic <laughs> at hand. Uh, bots created. No, this is. I'm saying no to this. Well, you had to know I was going to do it for this conversation. No, I didn't least. know you were going to do it because I thought you were a reasonable <laughs> human being. So, yeah, and a reasonable human being knows that's a good way to get a cheap laugh. Okay, uh, it stays until tomorrow, and then I'll I'll correct it. Okay, cool. I can live with that. Wait, wait, hold on. What is this NDQ cryptocurrency? What is that? Not sure if you guys keep it. Please a- proceed. 
Not sure if you guys are keeping up with the CES 2018, but Kodak has decided to get into cryptocurrency. So my question, when will we see an NDQ coin? That's funny. I think as soon as we figure out how to make money on any other existing cryptocurrency. No, no, no. How are you doing on that? Are you rich yet? No, no, no. Um, I am trying to learn about it, though. I definitely am. So I, I learned a hard lesson with crypto. So there's several different cryptocurrencies. There's the Bitcoin and there's a bunch of altcoins, right? Yeah, a gajillion of them. Yeah, there are. And so I tried to ride an altcoin that I saw rising up, Mm -hmm. Ripple. It's not doing well. No, but here's the thing. I got on that, and I got in it before it jumped, and that was good. And I rode it all the way up, and I was like, whoa, this is look how big that number is. It's amazing. And then I was like, and then it started falling. I just started riding it back down, and then I got it thinking about it. And so I sold it when I had like, positive 5% growth, which, hey, it's better than nothing. But then I got to thinking about it. I was like, you know, why the heck did I do that? I made an irrational investment decision based on emotion, not smart, Destin. And so I learned a very, very big lesson. Like, I saw that number get really big. I didn't sell because I somehow, you know, the cognitive dissonance, I just told myself I was just going to make a bunch of money, which was dumb. I forgot why I was doing this in the first place, which is I believe this is a valid technology that's going to move forward. And so I've changed my entire strategy. You know what? The goal remains. Have a Bitcoin for each kid. And also, I want to make sure that I'm only investing in things that I understand and believe in. Hmm. For example, I invested in Ripple and Tron because I wanted to ride them up and you know get rich or whatever. That was dumb. Because when I started looking at them, I was like, you know what? Ripple's not even based on blockchain technology. And I looked at Tron. It is. It's decentralized, more decentralized than Ripple. But, you know, you can't mine it. It was all created overnight. So I don't actually believe in either one of these. So right now, for my money, Zcash is the one. Do you know what Zcash is? I have Zcash. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about this, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe we did. Do you understand it or did you just buy it because I told you it was awesome? You didn't tell me it was awesome. I went and bought it, and then you told me it was awesome. Really? So this is why it's awesome. The problem with Bitcoin is that people can figure out your public address, right? So if you ever do a transaction with someone, then that's the address that they give you the Bitcoin at, and then forevermore that address can be tracked, and you can figure out exactly who owns that address. Now, there's some problems there. And you can just get around these problems by creating a new address every time you want to do a transaction, but that gets difficult. So Zcash, to my knowledge, is the only cryptocurrency created by actual cryptographers, like academic cryptographers. There's this guy you got to follow on Twitter. His name is Zuko. And there's a really great podcast by Radiolab about the ceremony. Totally got to listen to that. So anyway, Zcash has what's called a zero-knowledge snark. Long story short... They found a way to encrypt the address. And so if that address is encrypted, you don't know who is sending the money around. There's another currency that does it as well. It's called Monero. I think these are very important. So I bought Zcash and Monero because in the future, can you imagine a world where everybody in the world knew who gave money to everyone? I'm not enthusiastic about that. No, that's the opposite of your libertarian beliefs. So... All the great things that cryptocurrency does, you kind of take them away when the the ledger is truly public. So basically, Zcash and Monero are a private ledger. And so now the game becomes what is Coinbase going to put on their, you know, their platform next? I don't know. I, I don't know if it's going to be Zcash or Monero, but I really do agree in the architecture in which they've set things up. And so that's that's where I've gone now. Bitcoin Zcash Monero. Well, I think it's it's fun to listen to you dig into it. And <laughs> I poked around a lot more casually and landed on, I think the Zcash thing looks different and could work out. Sure. Uh, you know, it had some buzzwords that I liked and I don't know, I don't have a ton in it yet, but because it's hard to get into it, you don't just buy Bitcoin, especially if you're in Wyoming where most, most of the exchanges don't work in Wyoming at all. I had to, dig forever to find somebody I could work with. But the question, like all of this stems from, are we making 
uh, an NDQ, tradable cryptocurrency? No. Did you ha- is no. that in your plans? <laughs> no, not at all. It's a great question, though. <laughs> I love the fact that somebody asked the question, but no, we're not smart enough to do that. We need to lead that to okay. the academic cryptographers. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You get upset when I don't pronounce usernames right, and then I get this. Okay, user... <laughs> Limpe Kalikong says... Would it be possible to release the raw versions of the podcasts? Destin, why don't we release the raw versions of the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> That's the correct answer right there. Oh, yeah, we can't do that. That's why no. Tina nope. and anyone else associated with the podcast has signed a <laughs> a ironclad non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> <laughs> and the second we don't require that of people, I'm out. Also, like, for example, when I was just telling the story about my uncle earlier, I accidentally said his name, and I don't think he would want people to know his name. So we go back and we cut that kind of stuff out. Yeah, and honestly, I can only think of a few things that we've joked about that could offend a bunch of people or disappoint people. Like, I don't know. We're buddies. We joke about stuff, whatever. And and to be honest, we do it for, I mean, we do it for shock factor because... I want you to be real <laughs> and you know, sometimes and vice versa. Yeah. We can get into goofy podcast mode where we think we're important, but we're not. And so then usually the other one will just send a shot across the bow, which is the thing that got bleeped out that everybody was angry about a few episodes back. Like the thing that I suggested you might be heavily invested in was a bit outrageous. Let's just be serious. Sometimes we get super, super serious, but if I were to tell you something about, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> now, we're going to get yelled at for the same crap again, dude. Yeah, I know. It's fun to, I don't know, it's fun to, fun to have a mystery. It's a really funny mystery. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, but we need to quit. we need to quit doing that because people feel like we're leaving them out and we don't need to do that. Which is not the point. Which is not the point. The point is exactly what you said. Man, there's some good questions in here. Yeah, there is. I actually, I had to be pretty selective in picking just a couple so we could hit the outro quickly here. Oh, by the way, by the way, let me let me say this. Um, well, I've already decided I'm switching over to an Android, but I'm going to buy a Bitcoin miner. I've done the math, the amount of money I'm spending on it, it should pay off in several months. It's going to be quite a while, but in doing so, I'll learn more about the technology. And so I've decided that it's worth the investment because I know it will break even in the future. But the guy that was running this thing, he was like, oh, yeah, check this out. You just have a motherboard, and you got this GPU on it. But I was like, well, where's the monitor? How do you know what it's doing? He's like, oh, I just do this. And he remote desktops into it with his phone because it's an Android. I was like, what? How cool is that? Oh. Yeah. So he's sitting there using using his computer, basically, through his phone. It was very, very impressive. Cool, man. Well, hey, it's getting late, and I'm I'm trying to do this thing where I read... The Ranger's Apprentice with the kids every night before they fall asleep. Sweet. And the book, it's a touch derivative, feels like pretty much all young lit, but my kids are into it, and I don't hate it. So that's a pretty positive <laughs> review, right? The Ranger's Apprentice, that sounds like uh, Five Will Goes West or something like that. No. No, it's... <laughs> the Great Mouse Detective. That's that's what it is. No, it's, it's the Hunger Games, Harry Potter, Ender's Game. It's all the same thing. Last question. Have you ever taken yeah. the Pottermore quiz? Do you know what house on Harry Potter you're in? I'm pretty sure I'd be in uh, Hinkle Fluff. I don't know necessarily know all the <laughs> I'd be, houses. I did. I'm a Ravenclaw. And I was a little upset Ravenclaw. about it. That's the second worst one? That's the... No, 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 no. That's like the sort of bad guys, but they're not really bad. They're just a little darker. No, 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 no. No, Ravenclaw, I mean, like I started looking at what they do. I'm like, wow, they're pretty cool. So I'm happy to be a Ravenclaw at this point. What do they do? Uh, they. I mean, they're just very inclusive of other people that are different from them. They... They value intellect and wit. Just a lot of really neat things. Really, that's all in there. That's in the books. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I can get this right. It's so obviously Gryffindor. I picture that as like super good guy. Yeah. And then it Gryffindor, no, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin. Hufflepuff, and then Slytherin. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. All right. So I, yeah, I picture you're obviously a Slytherpuff. <laughs> Why would you say that? I don't know. Whatever. Go read oh, your kids, it, man. Well, it, it was hurtful. <laughs> it got through the armor. I think it changes the tone of everything as we're wrapping up here. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go read. Later, this dude. This was fun, man. Have a good Take night, care. man. See ya. Bye.